Good day, good, good people. Have we got a show for you? Uh, do we? I don't know. Would you even call this a show? That kind of implies something more grand. Oh, jeez. I thought we had a positive week. Whatever. I'm not biting because I'm excited today. I've opened up this graphics card, this RX 5700, to get the full potential out of its Navi GPU, and I haven't even broken anything. You're the full potential? So you mean overclocking it? Well, kinda. Yes. But also no. Because this is about unlocking access to the potential performance that AMD deliberately hid behind layers of power and frequency limiters. This is about a Navi graphics card that performs as well as its biggest sibling, but was never meant to. Hmm. If that sounds a bit harsh, that's maybe because it is. Not harsh on AMD, it's harsh on the poor Navi GPU and the engineers who spent ages working on trying to make the most powerful new graphics silicon they could. You see, these are all artificial limits put in place precisely to stop people from running their cheaper cards at the same high clock speeds as their more RDNA core filled brethren. Because it doesn't look like the 256 core disparity between the RX 5700 XT and this non-XT version actually makes that much difference when it comes to gaming performance. When both Navi GPUs are running around the same core clock speed, then there's practically nothing between them. Yeah, by default, the RX 5700 is locked down so that you can only push the GPU frequency so far. It has a hard 1850 MHz limit in which you can't go past in Wattman, and the power limit is restricted to only a plus 20% boost. When we tested this reference card, we could push both up to their maximums, and the GPU was barely running any hotter than a stop clock speed. In fact, with a little undervolting, we actually had the GPU running a little cooler, even though it was rendering faster. So, how does one open up the shackles unfairly placed upon the AMD RX 5700? There are actually two options here, one invasive and prone to GPU bricking, and the other a remarkably easy software intervention. Now, as much as I love needlessly killing expensive hardware, I do actually really like the Navi graphics cards and would feel really bad unnecessarily balking them. So I've only used the non-invasive option. You can mess around replacing the V bias of your RX 5700 to give it the same operating parameters as the RX 5700 XT, which does essentially the same thing, but firmware updates even on the right hardware is prone to failure, so whatever happens during rigging V bias software can be dangerous to the long life of your tech. Thankfully, a community member over at Igor's Lab, going by the name of Helm, has created the More Power tool. You can go and download it from Igor's Lab, and the link is in the description below. Now, obviously, whenever you're messing around with your tech and pushing it beyond its default limits, you are going to be swimming in murky warranty water, so if anything goes wrong, you might struggle to get it repaired or replaced. That said, if you're careful and not too greedy about what you want out of your tweaking, you shouldn't run into any problems, but, you know, disclaimers, your own risk and all that. So yes, by default, the overclocking frequency limit is set at 1850MHz, and we can easily just slam the slider all the way to the right, and then play around with the voltage setting to undervolt the GPU and keep it cooler while still running fast. You still get decent RTX 2060 super level gaming performance out of the RX 5700, but it could be so much more. For that, you need to download the More Power tool, and for ease of use, the RX 5700 XT VBIOS from Tech Power Up. You can even go for the 50th anniversary edition too. Load up the more power tool, make sure it's reading the correct GPU up top, and select load. Then pick the XTV BIOS from wherever you download it, and it should show up the new frequency and power limits in the software. There are other tweaks you can do to the fan curves and even push the frequency and power limits even further, but that way lie dragons, or at least melted silicon. Then you need to write SPPT to save your new settings and exit. You'll need to restart your PC to have them accessible in Wattman, so you can then get on with your tweaking. So boot up Radeon settings and head to the Wattman entry, which is inexplicably buried. And you'll see that you now have more room for your car to stretch its silicon legs. Now it's a case of seeing just how far you can push your Navi GPU, and it's a case of simple overclocking and undervolting now. I like to use the Heaven benchmark to overclock graphics cards, because you can have it looping in a window on the desktop while you tweak the settings and see how they take on the fly, and see how they break on the fly too. Our RX 3700 XT hits its overclocking limit at 2130 MHz with a plus 50 power entry, and undervolting the card to 1146 millivolts. We did kick things off by trying this on our reference RX 5700, and somewhat predictably it immediately fell over. But there was no puff of logic or dead GPU, so we rebooted and tried with a more parsimonious overclock. In the end, we landed on 2005 MHz final clock speed, with a plus 50% power bump. And we weren't as aggressive on the undervolt either, just to ensure stable GPU performance at this higher clock speed. Compared to the 1850 MHz limit of the default RX 5700 card, that's a decent frequency hike, especially when the stock clocked version only runs up to 1677 MHz in our testing. Our unlocked RX 5700, on the other hand, will run in-game at 1963 MHz. It does peak at 83 degrees C under those settings, but that's well within the means of the Navi GPU, though it does chug down a fair bit of extra juice to get there. 
With the unlocked overclock in place and running perfectly stable, we were able to see game performance on par with the RX 5700 XT, and in some cases it was actually slightly outperforming what we'd seen on the Navi benchmarks. That's because even though the XT has more RDNA cores at its heart, our unlocked GPU was running on average with a slightly higher frequency. In Far Cry New Dawn and F1 2019, we were seeing the RX 5700 running just a little quicker. Those titles are far more excited by higher clock speeds than almost anything else. Assassin's Creed delivered about exactly the same GPU performance, while Metro Exodus and Shadow of the Tomb Raider were just ever so slightly behind the XT. All our testing has been carried out at 1440p with the maximum in-game settings applied, so you can expect an even greater frame rate boost if you were to compare the 1080p default and unlocked frame rates. Across the board, we're looking at between 10 and 20% performance increase with the unlocked overclock, which completely bridges the gap between the AMD cards, and it also reels in the RTX 2070 Super from Nvidia too. It's a $350 card getting up to $500 levels. Even then, it's not putting undue stress on the Navi GPU either. At 83 degrees, it's not getting that hot, especially when AMD claims temperatures above 100 degrees C are fine on Navi. It's a bit toasty for our liking though. So what gives? Well, when AMD is traditionally the underdog company, often making a very public point of offering consumers greater value than the competition, it seems strange then that it's artificially restricting its own products and stopping customers from accessing the full potential of the cars they've bought. We expect AMD will point to variants in silicon and not being able to guarantee that all RX 5700 cards will be comfortable being pushed beyond the limits initially put in place. But surely that's the way with all potential overclocking. If you're willing to push the boundaries, you know that nothing is guaranteed. Realistically, it's probably simply a result of having to make sure there's a clearly defined point of performance difference between the two RX 5700 series cards, even if it needed to be artificially created. Thankfully, there is now a simple way to get around those restrictions. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Let us know if you end up tweaking your RX 5700 in the comments below. And remember, just be careful and be patient with your unlocking and overclocking. Check back for more PC gaming and hardware goodness, both here and on the website, and we will see you soon. Laters.